Hey guys, Aaron and Dusty here and welcome back to Eat, Move, Rest. So we are sitting here with little Mr. Max and <laughs> we have a 10 year challenge inspired video for you guys today with the trendy hashtag all over Instagram and YouTube <laughs> and all sorts of social media. We thought we need to sit down and we need to take it back 10 years and show you where we've come from, where we are now and tell you about where we want to go with our health and our lifestyle. You guys will want to stick around for this entire video because we will be splicing in a handful of juicy before and after photos from our past that have never been revealed on this channel, <laughs> but it is time. We are coming clean. <laughs> right. So let's just jump right into it. Let's take it back 10 years, actually maybe 11 years to our junior slash senior year of college. So Aaron and I hadn't got together yet. I was still in the mode of every Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, I would drink as much as I could, eat as much as I could, and I would spend all day Sunday on the couch, basically passed out, feeling like crap, only to not feel better again until next Wednesday. Exactly. <laughs> the cycle just continued, and it was the same for me. Yep. So it was eating the fast food, ordering the pizzas, staying out binge drinking, staying up all hours of the night, sleeping all hours of the day. Yeah. And consequently, I started to experience my first bouts of anxiety, stress, and depression. Yeah. And on top of that, it was all getting bottled and pushed down with more food, more drinking, more friends. How can I fill my time when I really knew that I needed someone that I could rely on and talk to, but the people that I wanted to do that with, my parents, yeah. I simply couldn't because I didn't want them to know that I was screwing around right. on their dime. <laughs> right. It was finals week that Aaron and I bumped into each other at a bar. Yep. So I was about six months out of a serious relationship and a tumultuous breakup. And needless to say, I was bound and determined to be a single lady for the rest of my life. <laughs> I was too. My single man, my parents had just got a divorce. I was like, marriage is never um, going to happen for me. And I told Aaron that straight up. I was like, this is fun. We started talking, mm -hmm. hanging out. And I'm like, hey, just so you know, we're not ever getting married. And I don't think this is going to go anywhere. But yeah, let's hang out. Let's have fun. And so we started doing that. Consequently, we kind of fell in love and what <laughs> happens when you fall in love? You eat, you drink, you have fun and it just doesn't matter. And I legitimately <laughs> gained about 15 pounds when, when we got together. For, for, uh, being a skinny kid my whole entire life, I actually felt like a man. I was like, oh wow, this is great. This feels good. Looking back, I was not healthy at all. So like Dusty said, we started cooking together. That was completely new to me. Um, so we figured if we're cooking our meals at home, then it must be healthy, right? Yeah. <laughs> but we were still of the mindset, as most Americans are on the sad or standard American diet, that we were needing eggs and bacon for breakfast, yep. cold cuts for lunch, and grilled fish or chicken for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> right. And granted, fish and chicken for dinner on the grill are better than pizza and burgers, but still, we were slathering our eggs in Velveeta cheese and putting provolone slices on top of our chicken breast like this was not a healthy diet <laughs> but we thought that it was so anyway we thought we still need to do something about getting healthy I had been a cyclist my whole entire life I was a BMXer now I was into road biking and Aaron was like I would love that let's do this together so before you know it we both had these awesome bikes and it was time for a new form of date night <laughs> yeah so we started riding we started buying old bikes on Craigslist and this was like our healthy habit right so we were building bikes and painting bikes and obviously then we were riding bikes <laughs> and unfortunately you get to the point where you realize no matter how much you ride how hard you work out you can never out train a bad diet so while we were having a blast cooking together and going on new bike ride date nights. I was the happiest I had ever been, but most definitely not the healthiest. Like I said earlier in college when I started experience my, experiencing my first bouts of anxiety, stress, and depression, they were still lingering and in fact they had really come to an ugly head as in the form of panic attacks almost right. every night. I would wake up breathless. I felt like I had this weight on my chest. I just did not know how to cope with or manage this, you know, supposed panic attack that felt like it was something more than that to me. 
Um, I ended up with a plethora of health symptoms that were just mysterious and undiagnosable. I went through several different visits with doctors, with specialists, everything coming back completely clean slate. You're normal, you're fine, you're just anxious, you have panic disorder, this and that. Yeah. But something underlying was really, really eating at me and I just could not shake it. I had become best friends and worst enemies with Google because we all know Google has all of the answers, but they're all the answers we don't want to hear. Being that the doctors had no answers, I had no choice other than to kind of take matters into my own hands and be like, look, I'm gonna figure this out for myself. What can I do? What do I have within my power to change? Right. Similarly, I was struggling with my own health issues. You know, I, again, we were 25, 26 years old, and I couldn't hardly, all of a sudden, couldn't eat the foods that I had always enjoyed. I was having acid reflux, indigestion, to the point where I was actually on two medications. And I'm looking at the situation like, I don't understand. You're supposed to eat, drink milk, and, and eat hard-boiled eggs to combat acid reflux and I'm doing these things and it's getting worse and I just couldn't figure it out and about that time then we this is about 2011 yep Dr. Esselstyn randomly came to our area to do a talk at a hospital he fed us bean sprout quesadillas and <laughs> other weird funny vegan food and we were like what is this stuff what's this guy talking about he showed us the results of from his 80 plus year old three-time heart attack patients that he was literally reversing their heart disease and making them 50 years younger on the inside all with a plant-based diet it was extremely eye-opening yeah. especially for me coming from a family of doctors as you all know my dad and his brothers and my grandpa cousins galore yeah you know a family of medical background and me myself having a biology degree it really resonated with me because I've been such a facts-based person that once I see something on a graph or a chart or an image, I'm just like, you can't argue with that. You, the numbers don't lie, which I've said in previous videos. So we committed. We said, let's, let's go uh, 40 days for Lent. Lent was approaching. Let's go 40 days with no meat. And yeah, let's pump the brakes. We didn't go full in vegan because we were still of the mindset that that was just ludicrous <laughs> i thought i was gonna shrivel up and die like no joke <laughs> people my buddies were like dude you're already like a skinny guy you can't stop eating meat we did we survived in fact we both felt better than ever so we had felt better than ever on this new vegetarian diet and on day 41 i went back to the drive through and got a big juicy burger and started feeling <laughs> not surprisingly like crap again <laughs> For me, I was actually enjoying the 40 day period because of the fact that we no longer had to sanitize and disinfect <laughs> after we cooked all this meat in our kitchen. Right. So I was like, you know what? I kind of like the way things were feeling and I think you were too. Right. So we decided we could handle vegetarian, <laughs> but we still weren't sure how to replace that protein that we were lacking, right? right? We're also worried about our protein intake. So we decided to double up on the dairy and the eggs. I think we ate scrambled eggs for breakfast and for lunch. <laughs> yeah, and, and sometimes for dinner. I remember just drinking the Greek yogurt by the gallon for oh my, my protein. <laughs> yeah, and again, for me especially, like trying to lift weights and be strong and be healthy, it was like whey protein shakes, power bars, like all of these things to replace, number one, the calories that I wasn't mm -hmm. getting from the, the meat that I had removed and so, so worried about the protein that after so long, we were actually in a worse place than we were before. Right, and because we were these, quote, healthy vegetarians <laughs> and we were riding our bikes all the time, yeah. we had gotten really excited about getting our blood panels done all the time, you know, yeah. having easy access to a doctor's office. Right. Um, so we had a lot of fun kind of seeing our progress with our <laughs> blood work. Well. Come to find out, we get our blood drawn on this new vegetarian diet. My cholesterol was through the roof. Yeah. And the first thing I hear is, well, your mom's got it, your dad's got it, they're both on medications. It might not be a bad idea since it runs in the family, it's hereditary. You might wanna think about just getting on a cholesterol medication to protect your heart now. Right, same thing for me. Again, with the medication, I was like, well, I'm eating these hard boiled eggs and I'm drinking the, the milk, right, to, to reduce the acid reflux and vegetarian, so I should be healthy. Nope, things got worse, medications got bumped up, 
and we were like, now what? The worst part of all was that I was still suffering from these debilitating panic attacks and these inexplicable symptoms that I just couldn't even figure out a solution to. So while I didn't have a, quote, disease, I was most definitely in a state of dis-ease. It all came to a head when we were on our flight to San Diego. They had to actually land the flight early, thanks to me. <laughs> Major panic attack on the flight. Literally, an ambulance met the plane at the runway. I had to figure out how to rent a car, figure out what hospital she was in. It was chaos. And I think that might have been the straw that broke the camel's back. Right. Real change had to be made. So uh, the first thing I did was I tossed out all of my vitamins and supplements and powders and things that I had been adding in that were supposedly going to make me invincible and cure my problems. No more pills, powders, potions. One of the biggest things for me, which I will say for a separate video, is getting rid of my birth control that I had been on for eight years and I could only imagine what that was doing with my hormones, if not the rest of my health and well-being. Right. So we'll save that for another video. Shoot us some comments below if you're interested in a story on that. But needless to say, we stripped it down, got back to the basics, and decided to take a look back at that crazy little doctor, Dr. Esselstyn, and what he was preaching about the power of plants. Right. <laughs> Let's look into this plant-based vegan diet. Oh my gosh, the word vegan freaked <laughs> me out so bad. But we very simply started making upgrades. We upgraded the dairy milk to almond milk. We upgraded our burgers to veggie burgers. We started making these tiny, tiny upgrades because when we cut things out, we were just starving, right? I didn't know what to replace the food with when we cut it out and instead of starving, we thought we need to start making upgrades. So that's what we did. Right, and I think one of the most critical components was that we started to arm ourselves with education. Yeah. We <laughs> went out and we got our health and lifestyle certification through yeah. a, a series of courses. And we also went to a plant-based conference where we heard from all of the doctors all of the big guys that you see on all the documentaries. We yep. watched a handful of documentaries, yep. some of them coming from the vegan ethical standpoint, some of them coming from the plant-based health and nutrition standpoint. Yep. We wanted to hear all angles because we were really becoming firm believers in it and it only made sense to keep educating ourselves so that we knew honestly how to stock our refrigerator and our <laughs> pantry. Right, so yeah, we also took uh, Dr. T. T. Colin Campbell's course through um, Cornell that was a strictly a plant-based nutrition certification. We got that, we learned more than we ever thought that we could, and we started implementing it hardcore into our lives. We were plant-based, we were vegan now, full on, and we just started going for it. And that's kind of when the whole eat, move, rest thing came about. We thought back to the basics. What are the three things we can all do, or we all have to do every day just to survive, but we and could all be doing them better. We could all be doing them better. <laughs> Eat better, move better, rest better. Let's go for it. And that's how this was born. It became a lot of recipe sharing and lifestyle focused. And our friends we were hearing from were really enjoying it. And that was enough for us to say, hey, we're enjoying it too. Yeah. Let's take it to the next level. Let's, let's do video. Right. So YouTube was born <laughs> and we have just slowly but surely been getting better with our diet less supplements, more whole foods, gaining healthy weight, getting stronger and doing all of it on a plant-based diet. And now culminating this 10 year journey into the people we are now, like we said, we, little Max was just born. We've never been healthier, felt better, felt stronger. Yes, there still is anxiety. We still struggle like everybody else with, with these certain aspects of life, but we just feel like we're so much more well e equipped to handle these challenges of life. And it's because of the way we eat, the way we move, and the way we rest. Like we prioritize these three things and we're hoping to share them and continue to share them with you guys. So. Yeah, and while everybody still may not be on the same page as us or quite understand where we're coming from, in fact, I think my grandma always asks <laughs> us at every family gathering, yeah. what can you have? Yeah. And I always say, what can't we have? I can't even begin to tell you how many different varieties of lentils and beans and fruits we've enjoyed over the past several years. Yep. Fruit being a big one where before I had been under the assumption that I could only eat one banana a day or I was going to quote, gain weight, yeah. but that's definitely not the case. Now we eat them by the dozen. Okay, why don't we just talk about what we used to eat and what we eat ah, now? 
Yeah, we'll, we'll kind of share with you guys a contrast. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So before when our breakfast were eggs, hash browns, and scrambled eggs, now we're looking at a healthy superfood packed green smoothie accompanied by an abundance of fruit. That's kind of our go-to. Yeah. We've also been known to make our crock pot steel cut <laughs> oats. We'll put those below in the description. Right, especially on these cold days. Um, those have been my lunch as of late. So lunch used to be like the 12 foot or 12 inch or like no joke 16 inch subs from like our favorite sub shop a whole loaf of bread a whole cut of cheese and like half of a, a, a turkey on these sandwiches and we wondered why we never felt good so yeah we we switched the subs for steel cut oats for lunch or we still like to remain like raw till dinner and do the whole raw till four raw till dinner thing so we eat a lot of fruit for lunch a too. lot of living foods yeah. and a lot of times we'll do one of our big hearty rainbow salads with just an abundance of different types of dark leafy greens topped with all the colors of the rainbow yep. in, in the form of delicious veggies. And if you want something with a little bit more substance, if we're yep. feeling a little bit hungrier, you know, adding on some beans or some cooked grains like quinoa on top, yep. topping it with some healthy fats like avocado. Oh, and wait. it's just, you know, you take away, you look at your sub sandwich and we used to think it was a, a salad on a sandwich when really it's iceberg lettuce and a bunch of cheese yeah. on a loaf of bread. You're essentially <laughs> eating a loaf of bread. Right. <laughs> so instead we're like, let's take what we were cramming inside of the yep. inside of the sub, let's put it in a big bowl and eat more of it right. and feel even better yep. running on cleaner fuel. <laughs> dinners went from like grilled chicken and grilled burgers, pizzas, all these dinners that we used to have that we thought were healthy because we were cooking are now instant pot um, sweet potatoes, beets, carrots, again with some beans, some legumes, some grains like quinoa, brown rice, some steamed kale, um, stews. Oh my gosh. I make you guys, so many good stews. If you guys follow this channel, you know that we've got a handful of really good chilies and vegan stews. So yeah, that's, that's how things have changed and we are eating more now. Aaron just made it a 3,000 calorie plus what I eat in a day. I've got a 3,500 calorie what I eat in a day. If you guys don't believe that we're eating uh, a, a whole lot of food, we <laughs> actually are. And you can go back and watch those what I eat in a days, and we'll prove it to you. We're eating like crazy and we're eating all whole healthy foods and we're thriving on them. So, And it's a blast because so many people are on these different various diets and they're all about restriction yep. and what you can't have and shouldn't have and low calorie, low this, low that. And we're feeling like, what, like I said, what can't we eat? We're eating in abundance, we're eating, eating until we're satiated, right. we feel full, we feel happy. Our digestion is phenomenal. Our oh skin is clearer than ever. My hair feels healthier than ever. My nails grow so fast. <laughs> yeah. We feel fully alive. On top of that, our fitness. We have to talk about our fitness. We are both at a point now where we are healthier and stronger. Erin is seven weeks postpartum and she's feeling fitter and stronger than ever because we're able. Her body has bounced back. I spent time last year uh, lifting weights in the gym, getting stronger than I ever have been, ever thought that I could be. Again, doing all of this on a plant-based vegan diet. So yeah, we talked about how our eating has improved, our moving, our physical fitness has definitely improved. And again, staying with the theme of our brand, our rest has obviously improved. Even with little baby Max, we are sleeping like rocks. We wake up feeling rested, we fall asleep fast at night, and it's just everything has been on point since taking it's, more, paying more attention. It's just, it becomes such a cycle and yeah. the wheels, it, you can imagine it like a train that's at a standstill and it takes it a while to build <laughs> up that steam right. until before you know it, it's really trucking along at a steady rate. Yep. And we're feeling like that's kind of what Eat, Move, Rest is when you do them all your best in conjunction with each other, yep. it creates this healthy cycle and before you know it, the ball is just rolling. So you're eating clean, it fuels you to work out and have energy, and when you're burning that energy via working out, then coincidentally, you're sleeping like a rock. You're sleeping <laughs> soundly at night, more so than you were. Yep, 
And then again, you wake up the next day and you want to fuel your body with healthy foods. So the cycle continues. And like Aaron just said, we're just like a steamroller right now. We're just steamrolling through life, <laughs> feeling good, being happy and fit and healthy. So, so a big aim of our channel is obviously you know, sharing with you guys the joys of the plant-based lifestyle, <laughs> but it is beyond the kale. Right. Having this healthy transformation that we've experienced has been about more than just the food that's on our plate. Yep. That has definitely been the portal that has helped us to get back into a good fitness routine and a good sleep routine. Right. But ultimately, it's it's a lifestyle choice beyond yep. the kale on your plate. Right. <laughs> so Baby Max is getting hungry. <laughs> We have exhausted ourselves sharing our health transformation story with you guys. We hope you enjoyed it. Yes. Um, really quick, a couple of the most common questions that we tend to get from you guys are, how do you curb your cravings for your old ways? And how do you eat out now? How do you travel now? Right. So if you guys have these questions and want us to answer them for you, let us know in the comments below. We hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. You know the drill. Eat, move, rest, your best. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>